Previously, we talked about vitamin B6 or pyridoxine, right? In this video, we are going to talk about another very important vitamin called vitamin B7 or biotin, right? So we will discuss the general characteristics, functions, and deficiency of this vitamin, right? So as usual, let's start with the characteristics, right? So uh, the active form uh, of this vitamin is biotin, right? Simply biotin. What about the sources? Where do we get this vitamin? Okay, so there are different sources. Uh, we have first ones are plant sources. Plant sources include soya products uh, and nuts, right? Uh, animal sources include uh, like from animal products like liver, egg yolk, or dairy products, right? Small amounts of this vitamin are synthesized by intestinal flora. So you need to remember this one. It's very important. Uh, I will tell you in clinical significance, right? And there's another vitamin also synthesized by intestinal flora. It's vitamin K, right? You need to remember it very well. We'll talk about it later after vitamin, after finishing the vitamin B complexes, right? What about resorption, right? For resorption, uh, there is a pancreatic enzyme known as uh, biotinides, right? So biotinides cleaves uh, protein-bound biotin into free biotin, and then it will be uh, absorbed like actively in the intestine, right? For transport, uh, this vitamin is transported in blood like freely, right? So it's freely transported in blood, right? Now let's talk about uh, the functions of vitamin B7, right? So uh, biotin is a coenzyme for various uh, carboxylase enzyme complexes, which all add a one carbon group, right? So just to remember, the enzymes which use uh, biotin as a cofactor, they are carboxylases, right? Okay, let me give you like three examples of processes which need uh, this biotin, right? The first one, in fat acid synthesis, there is an enzyme called acetyl-CoA carboxylase, right? So this enzyme acts on the conversion of acetyl-CoA Right, you can see it's a two carbon, right? Two carbon molecule when it's converted to malonyl CoA, which is three carbon, right? So, acetyl CoA carboxylase it acts on this pathway, right? The second process is uh, gluconeogenesis, right? This gluconeogenesis means formation of glucose from non carbohydrate sources, and in this case, if we are talking about pyruvate carboxylase, this one is more like a reverse of our, our glycolysis right so where does this uh enzyme act in conversion of pyruvate the three carbon into oxaloacetate which is four carbon right so it acts on this on this part right uh pyruvate carboxylase right uh then the third process is fat acid reduction right where the enzyme will be propionyl CoA carboxylase, right? So you need to remember there are some branched, uh, branched chain amino acids like 309, just an example, or valine, right? So those ones and some odd chain fat acids, which leads to uh, a, a condition where we have a three carbon molecule called propionyl, right? So here the pathway, the exit pathway, which... Uh, uh, this enzyme act is conversion of propionyl CoA, that's three carbon, into methyl malonyl CoA, right? Methyl malonyl CoA is actually a four carbon, right? Okay, so the easiest way to remember where this biotin acts is just simple, right? You you just need to remember that biotin is a coenzyme for all carboxylase enzyme complexes that are not vitamin K dependent, right? Where do we get this vitamin K dependent carboxylase? If you still remember our uh, gamma carboxylation of um, 
like you, you know like in a clotting factors epoxide reductase pathway right if there is something okay how to say this all right so if the question is something to do with blood clotting right or gamma carboxylation of glutamic acid it means this protein this that pathway doesn't need biotin right that part that process need vitamin k right okay so to conclude this video we will talk about deficiency right let's talk about deficiency of vitamin b7 uh as usual i said you need to focus on the causes of the uh, deficiency right so the first one as usual is malnutrition uh then another cause is uh prolonged use of antibiotics so prolonged use of antibiotics will lead to destruction of intestinal flora because i said like small amount of this vitamin is synthesized from uh intestinal flora right so this one has clinical significance also though not bigger is for vitamin k Another one which is very important and very specific for vi for vitamin B7 is uh, excessive consumption of raw egg white, right? Because uh, raw egg white, they contain a molecule called avidin, right? Avidin, right? So avidin binds to biotin in the intestinal lumen, which will inhibit biotin reception. Right. You know, like uh, a long, long back, uh, like when these are uh, like whey proteins, like for bodybuilders, were not very popular. These people used to eat uh, boiled eggs, right? So they were the ones who usually get this uh, vitamin B6 deficiency, right? So uh, to conclude this video, let's talk about like clinical features, right? So clinical features include dermatitis, conjunctivitis, enteritis alopecia that's hair loss myalgia as muscle pain and neurological symptoms like lethargy depression uh mental status changes hallucinations uh paresthesia right etc right thank you so much if you like this video please make sure you subscribe so that you won't miss any of our latest videos mm -hmm.